Uh, now we kind of reached the point where we, we can start uh, finding what we're aiming for here. And what, remember what we're aiming for is this Q star, okay? The, the amount to order, okay? And if we keep on this example, now there will be two different numbers. One for one of the distributions and another one for the other one. But uh, you know I'm lazy, so I just compute one of them. And I leave this other one to you, okay? Uh, and what we actually need to do now is to solve the final equation, isn't it? We have the equation here, okay? Now, if I can remember, uh, you know my head. Now, if we take the first distribution only, okay, this, uh, this one. Now, we find out previously that this F O Q was equal to something. I have forgotten it already, so I have to look for it. Uh, 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 h times Q minus alpha. Okay, it was H times Q minus alpha. Okay, now we can int enter this into this formula. Okay, we have this, so we just put the star on this one, and we equate that to the fraction which was 0 0.867, wasn't it? And of course, now we have to enter this alpha, then we need to know what that was, okay? That was the lower limit of the distribution, which was 9,000. So this one is 9,000. Then it's straightforward to solve this. This age had a value? Or did I just forget to tell you about it? We need a storage cost here, don't we? No, sorry. Oh. This was not the storage cost. Confusing. Sorry. St stroke, st strike that one. The H was the this height, wasn't it? And it was equal to something. Mm -mm -mm. Zero point zero 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 twenty-five. So this was zero point zero 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 twenty-five. Okay, now we have all information to calculate the Q star from the uniform distribution. So if we divide by H here, we get Q star minus 9,000 equal to 0 0.867 divided by 0 0.00025. Then we can move that on the right hand side to produce the final answer here. Q star is 0 0.867 divided by 0. 0.25 minus 9,000. It's always uh, funny to see if you get the right number here. Of course, the number you get should be somewhere in between 9 and 13,000. Okay, if you get a different number, then you've then you done something wrong here because uh, you cannot order outside this distribution when we have defined it to be bounded like that. So, mm -hmm. Actually, the correct value here should be 0 0.866666, and it means something here. If you put that in, or 0 0.867, this difference actually changes the, the end result significantly. So it turns out to be something close to 12,467. Okay, so now you can see the amount of overbooking we do here. Here is the uniform distribution. It starts at 9,000, it ends at 13,000, and it's just 12, 4, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Around here is our Q star. So it's a tiny amount on the right here and a big amount on the left, as we expected. So you order up almost to the upper limit here, but there is still slightly over 500 left, okay? But the point is that this gives you an exact number, of course. So you kind of know what to do, and you know the argument which lies behind this. What would you expect for a solution if you apply the other density? Then there's even higher probability that you'll sell more, isn't it? 
So you should expect a solution to the right of this one. So if you use the triangular equation, you should end up some, somewhere in between that point and that point. So the QT should be some, somewhere up here, maybe even closer to 13,000 than this number, I think. Due to the fact that it's kind of skewed to the right, so you have more probability of selling even more. So you see again, in practice, if you kind of had made this easy, just say, okay, we just ordered 13,000. That is kind of the upper limit, and this is an anniversary festival, so, so you see you don't really make much difference. Okay, it's only difference on 500 t-shirts out of around 13,000, so that's kind of a small change. But of course, this depends heavily on the actual distributions you, you put into it. But the main force here is the difference between the selling price of 180 and the buying price of 550. Actually, this 130 number, which kind of gets big compared to the 20 number. You see that, don't you, that when you, you have this CU divided by CU plus, plus CO, if this is a very big number, then this one kind of vanishes, so you end up with one, okay? Aiming for a full, uh, a full uh, hit, so to speak, on the, on the tickets and t-shirt sales. Okay, uh, this was only half of the task. Now it kind of remains to see what happens exactly if you actually solve this equation on the bottom here. And again, of course, you do the same. It's the same logic here, no difference, but uh, the, the math becomes slightly more tricky here. Not very much, but a little bit. Uh, at the bottom it says alpha times Q minus alpha plus V halves times Q square minus alpha square. And that should equal 0 0.867. And the unknown here is the Q. And the B is known. We found that, didn't we? Uh, sorry, there should be one A here, shouldn't it? Yeah. This one should be an A, not an alpha. We have the A, we have the B, we have the alpha. And we have that one, so the only thing which is unknown here is the Q. But you see it becomes a quadratic equation here. So... Um, Okay, we can uh, compute a little bit more here. here. Alpha times Q minus A times alpha plus B half Q square minus B half alpha square. This is a constant and this is a constant. So we can write it like B half times Q squared plus A times Q minus these two. A alpha plus B half alpha squared. And this should, we should subtract this one from this constant. When we move it over, it gets minus, so it's minus ahead, so it's still a plus. Equal to zero. So we have to solve this second degree equation to find the Q. And when you solve a second degree equation, you probably remember the formula. It looks like this. And A is this one, B is this one, and C is all this one, okay? And it's better then to do it correct, to put a plus here and put minus in front of all this one, then the formula is correct because it's plus on all terms here. So by entering these A for B, B halves for A, and this term for C, you can find a solution. You get two solutions. One of them is the right one, the other one is not. So you kind of have to search for those that, that, are, that one will typically fall out of the interval from 9,000 to 13,000, the other one will fall in. And the one which falls in should be larger than 12,467, if our logic holds. But you can check this yourself. It's a matter of just using a calculator and put the numbers in, okay? A was uh, 0 0.00125, I think. And yeah, you're, it's, it's, it's all there, okay? But uh, it's a certain amount of calculations which I kind of didn't do here.
Is it hard to see, Erika? Because of this one? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you just tell me. I can move it, okay. So basically what we did though, was just to enter values into a folder, okay? So we kind of did some argument. We started out with some ticket sales numbers, and then we said, okay, in order to find t-shirts, we divide these ticket numbers by three, effectively meaning that every third ticket sold produces a ticket, a t-shirt sold. And then we said, okay, now we need to produce some probability densities, and we kind of launched two different alternatives, one kind of optimistic one, triangle, a kind of more probability on selling more, and a kind of yeah, totally random distribution within the boundaries. And then we, we solved it for one of the distributions which produces, produced an order number of 12,467 t-shirts. How much would Molde have to pay for this when they bought them? Yeah, they bought each for 50 kroners, didn't they? So it would be 12 for... 67 times 50 crowns. If you multiply with 100, it's two more zeros. That expensive. Jesus Christ. Numbers get high, don't they? You multiply by 100, we get this number, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1.2 million. We have to divide by 2. We wanted to multiply by 50. Now I multiply by 100, too, and then I have to divide this by 2, which is. 600 and something thousand, okay? A little bit more than that, okay? Of course, if they sell all, they get a lot, don't they? Then it's uh, 180 times that, minus 50, 130 times that in pure profits, which is quite, quite a big number, close to 2 million, only on the t-shirts, okay? You can hire some artists for 2 millions, can't you? Yeah, at least two. Maybe one, <laughs> if it's a good one. You can't, you can't even get a good one for two million, can you? Yeah, but this, this kind of puts things in a kind of setting that hopefully is understandable in a way. That's, that's the idea. But as I said, when you start dealing with numbers, then it gets, yeah, it gets uh, ugly. Okay. Any questions? In last year's exam, I did not give this stuff. No, two years ago. So it may be this year then. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Who knows? We will see. Okay. A few words finally today on extensions of the Newsboy concept. Uh, we have already discussed this, this kind of multi period extension, okay? That is uh, uh, one kind of obvious thing. And we talked slightly about uh, postponement, uh, buying equipment to change motive during the festival based on observing demand. Uh, the, the top one we haven't discussed. We can also have an extension into more than one product, because as you probably know, the Molde International Jazz Festival has kind of started producing more than a single t-shirt. So last year I think they had two or maybe three or so. You can of course have more than one product. But uh, if you think about the demand side, you would perhaps expect that these demands are kind of connected. So if you sell two t-shirts, and you sell more of one, you sell less of the other. At least to some extent. Which of course opens up a kind of different type of model, okay? because then you kind of have to have a kind of multi-product distribution, describing the probability that you sell something of one and the probability that you sell something of another. Which is kind of tricky. Unless they are kind of non-connected, but that makes not much sense in my opinion. Then you have to address one t-shirt to one part of the market, maybe the children's t-shirt, and an adult t-shirt for the, for the adults. Then you kind of can interconnect it and kind of use new spoils models as they are on each of them. But if you compare more products and more periods, then it gets tricky, okay? It gets complicated. Finally, there is another problem here, and that is if you remember, 
when we kind of started out here. There are two numbers here which are under the control of the festival, isn't it? This number can be decided by the jazz festival. This number can also be decided. We take these numbers as parameters in this model, but of course they can be variables. And if you really want to maximize your profit here, you should kind of open up for making these numbers as well as this ordering quantity a decision variable of the model. So that means introducing pricing into the model. Of course, in that case, you would need to know the coupling between your uncertain demand and the different prices you choose. We can think like this now, okay, if we choose P equals to 130 and this other one, which was uh, 30, wasn't it? Or was it 50? 30, yes, it was 150 actually here. And 30, these, these two prices, let's call it P1 and P2, then we can have this distribution, 9,300, okay? But what if we increase this price and put it equal to 300. What would happen, do you think? You would probably sell less. Okay, so if you keep, the, maybe you should move this distribution in this direction, maybe you should put it together, so it will affect the distribution. So the price you choose should be linked to this distribution. And of course there are two prices to choose here. And both of them will affect your sales. This is a uh, if you put this very low, people could avoid buying it now, waiting to buy it later on. Okay? So that would also reduce. And of course, if you do it the other way around, it would go the other way around. It would probably sell more. So you see, this is not uh, straightforward to do. Uh, in the theory, there is a lot of models which looks at newsboys problems with pricing. Then you have to like make a lot of assumptions on how this link between the pricing system and the uncertainty is. You say that these kind of are interconnected, they are kind of linear, or they are multiplicative. There's a lot of options here. And if you study the literature, you see that most of the situations, of course, produce much more complex formulas, if formulas are produced at all. And if you combine these, with multi-product and multi-period, then you get an extremely tricky problem to solve. And of course, in reality, if you look at them all the Jazz Festival, they have a multi-product problem, they have multiple periods, basically, they can, during days, change the motif if, if they're interested in it, and of course, the pricing option is there. So it's, in fact, a really tricky problem we look at here, because the solution we offer here is just a single step from the naive just guess to a slightly more scientific approach. But if you really want to do this closer to reality, you would have to do a lot more than we've done here. But this is kind of work which are in a sense at the, should we say, at the, the research frontier. So th there is still research going on here on kind of examining these pricing models, for instance, and this more complex models related to multiple pairs of products. So uh, I don't think we have seen the, the end of these yet. So there is, there is more to come, so to speak. Uh, I think I look at some articles here for those who are really interested. Of course, you can read this. Uh, there is a paper. It's in the textbook. And it is, let's see if we can find it. Uh, there's a review. You know what the review article is? It's kind of sums up everything which is done, okay? Review articles are nice, okay? You can start reading them and you get a kind of closed form overview of a certain research area. And there is a paper by Petrucci and Dada. Uh, let's see if we can find the title of it. It's called Pricing and the News Vendor Problem, a review with extensions. It was published in a very distinguished journal called Operations Research back in 1999. So if you are really interested in this, you can read this article. 
But this is, of course, not related to events at all. It's just kind of a mathematical discussion and description of various methods in different directions. There's even more extensions than those written here. There's a whole pile of uh, relatively new extensions related to games. Do you know any game theory? Have you learned a little bit sometimes, mm -hmm. somewhere, yes, in your career? Yeah, okay. Of course you can have gaming here. Suppose you have two newsboys selling their newspaper. Both can decide prices. Of course if one decides a high price, the other low, there's, then there's certain competition if they choose the same prices. And the question is, uh, who will sell most, in a sense, in, in an equilibrium setting? And that is uh, even more tricky. So there's all possible uh, points of kind of taking this theory into more reality-like, but of course typically also more, more abstract when it comes to the mathematical tools needed to understand it. Okay. I think we stop here today. The uh, next uh, uh, point is, of course, chapter 4. Uh, a few words about the plan now, okay? Uh, tomorrow we do chapter 4. And then there is, let's see, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 chapters, but they are very small. Uh, chapter 5 is just some slight discussion on supply chains, a little bit on transportation, there's a little bit on dynamic pricing, and uh, maybe chapter 8 and 9 are those. So, uh, next week, which is week 42, we finish lecturing. Then, the week after, which is week 43, we run through the final exercise, which is number 5, and the exam from two years ago. Then, the exam comes in week 44, doesn't it? Okay, does this seem like a feasible plan? Yeah. And we agreed on using uh, all available written aids for the exam, yeah. So you should bring your books and your exercises and uh, solutions and whatever, okay? A good idea. And of course, when you prepare for the exam, you should prepare as normal, by reading and understanding, as much as possible. Do not rely on the fact that you have your aids with you, that will not uh, help you much. You won't have time to, to do that anyway. Okay, any questions? No, you cannot use the computer, I think. <laughs> because uh, then you can communicate, and that is the only thing we want to avoid. But you can bring your calculator. If you have a computer without a wireless oh, network yes. card, maybe you can uh, be <laughs> allowed to use that one. But then you have to take out the network card. I, don't think I, I, wouldn't, rec I wouldn't recommend you so to do that. Are not going to stop any program by Lingo? Program? No. no. You will not be asked to solve any problem by Lingo, obviously. But you may be sort uh, asked to explain, to argue, to judge, to interpret, which is just as, just as fine. There's really no point in, yeah. So I might ask questions like, how would you kind of do this in Lingo? Or you can just write down the certain constraints, for instance. How can you formulate that in Lingo, if, if you like? I don't know, if I like, to be <laughs> precise, actually. <laughs> Uh, so, do you want an easy or uh, a hard exam? Easy. Are you sure about that? So, everybody would like an A? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I can't promise that. <laughs> no. no, normally when I have exams, right, there is many A's and many E's. So, we will see, okay? But we had an exam together uh, last year, didn't we? That was kind of nice, I seem to remember. Nice results. I'm not sure uh, the exam reflected your knowledge, but uh, to some extent at least. So uh, we will see. I don't think this will be very difficult, but it won't be very easy either. So it will be a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And so I will have to start preparing this exam now in yeah, not so very much time. But. Uh, it will mainly be from this one, okay? I won't try to test you on the general logistics stuff. Of course, what we need there is kind of the models and how they work. And there may be some qu questions related to that, but the main point here is to kind of put this into an event setting. So there will be some talks about events. So what, what, what is what, what is the difference between an event and producing cars, for instance, if there is any differences? 
So we, we kind of need to put it in that setting. You will get a, a good feeling, I think, when we look at the exam from two years ago. I believe it, it's on front row already, isn't it? Yes. Have you looked at it? Yes. Did it look difficult? Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's good. That's how it should be, okay? Because uh, the idea is that basically from now on you will, you will put the effort into this and, and work hard, okay? But this is the only course you have, isn't it? So there is no excuse. No excuse for not starting up 8 in the morning, finishing 12 in the evening. With this course, from now on up till and including week 44. Yeah, yeah I expect that. Of course, there will be some time to sleep, to <laughs> go to the cinema once a week, maybe. <laughs> now, you, you do this, it will be, be okay. We will see. Other questions? We will meet tomorrow, I think, again. So we, you can uh, try to find some more questions. We will talk about uh, event production then, tomorrow. Which is uh, yeah, somewhat, somewhat easier, I think, than this stuff. At least from the mathematical point of view. And then basically the only hard part is this uh, chapter 10. No, chapter 9. And that's not hard either. Actually, we have finished up now on page 60, 63, 65, 66, and then we finish this, uh, yeah, mm. yeah, so it's next week, it's only 25, 30 pages to run through, so it's, this is good, we have enough time, so you're free to go, <laughs> thank you. <laughs>